Good morning everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today we are going to be doing some muzzle brake testing with my PSA AR-10. Now of course the AR-10 fires 308 or 6.5 Creedmoor, the one that I have of course fires 308. So now 308 isn't a gun with a massive recoil, the bullet isn't all that heavy, it's not all that fast, and it's in a pretty compact cartridge and it's very efficient when it comes to recoil. So it's actually a, a really, really smooth firing gun and the PSA AR-10 I have not had any issues with, uh, with excessive recoil or anything like that. But compared to a 5.56, it does have two to three times the recoil, and it's a lot more aggressive, and it's harder to keep uh, multiple quick shots on target. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing it with just the regular, the A2 birdcage that it comes with, and then we'll also have five very, very inexpensive muzzle brakes from eBay. All of these are under $20. They all range from about $10 to $20, but one of them was over $20, and this guy, this guy right here, it was marketed as a muzzle brake, a seven inch muzzle brake, and it looks conspicuously like silencer baffles, but it was marketed as a muzzle brake. Interesting. But we are gonna go ahead and throw this guy on there as well as the other four and see which one gives us the best recoil compensation, the best recoil reduction. If now, of course, these are all incredibly cheap parts. So if one of these works out really well, great. If none of them work, I didn't really spend all that much money. Alrighty, so first up, we have some Tula 150 grain uh, FMJ that we're going to be putting through this guy and we have 20 rounds loaded up and this is of course with the A2 birdcage and later on we'll be going through some different muzzle brakes and see how they do. There it was, 20 rounds for the Tula, just fine. Uh, not super aggressive recoil, but I mean, it is something that if you're gonna be shooting a couple over 100 rounds, you are definitely going to be feeling it. So let's go ahead, let's uh, load up another one. So now this time here, we're gonna fire another 20 rounds of the Tula 150 grain. But now we have a very basic looking muzzle brake. It has the two ports on top and the three ports on the, each side. And uh, we'll see how well this one here goes. This guy here was 12 bucks off of eBay. So let's see how this guy does. There was 20 more rounds of two up down with the new muscle brake, uh, the $12 one. Yeah, felt pretty good, felt a lot better. Uh, now the concussive force was also much, much higher. Um, you can tell if it was a little bit louder even with my headphones on, but that's kind of what you expect. But yeah, definitely, definitely a big big decrease in, uh, in recoil, or at least felt recoil, felt pretty good. Now let's go ahead and throw on another one. Alrighty, so muzzle brake number two. This one here was about 20 bucks. I think it was just under 20 bucks. It's kind of the dragon's breast style or dragon brake, something like that. But it's supposed to, you know, just be a basic muzzle brake and a little bit of a sound forwarder. I'm not really sure what kind of the angular aggressive look up front is for, if it's for anything. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, put another 20 rounds. I think this one here is going to be brown bear, which is lacquered uh, steel ammo. And we're gonna go ahead, put 20 rounds through this guy. Um, this is our second muzzle brake. Uh, the other one did probably 30 to 40% um, recoil, felt recoil reduction. And so now again, this isn't a very scientific test. This is just kind of my observation and subjective to how I feel, how much recoil it actually reduces. Uh, I shot a couple hundred rounds of this just with the uh, A2 uh, birdcage on it. And so with the other muzzle brake, there was quite a bit more force. It was quite a bit louder, but there was a good amount of recoil reduction. Now on this guy here, let's go ahead and see how it does. We already got it loaded up. Now I only made it about 10 rounds through before I had to put on my safety glasses. Uh, it just, it, this angle back here is just throwing it so much back at you and there's so much smoke and stuff like that, that it's a really annoying without these guys on. All right, 20 rounds 
down. Incredibly loud, incredibly loud, and a lot of smoke back in your face. The recoil reduction, great. Uh, felt great, probably a little bit better than the other one. Uh, no pain in my shoulder whatsoever. I just don't like how loud it is and how much of it comes back into my face. Don't like that part one bit. Alrighty, this is muzzle brake number three. We have 20 rounds of Federal Power Shock, which is this 150 grain soft point ammo. Uh, this guy here, it's a little bit longer. It's not all that heavy. Uh, it's probably about six or seven ounces, uh, but I'm not actually expecting much of this to go back in my face the way it's done with just these kind of circles all the way around. Uh, so hopefully I don't get a lot of it back at me, but I do expect it to be pretty loud and not to actually be quite as good with actual recoil reduction as some of the other guys. Um, very loud, very, very loud, and minimal recoil reduction, not much. Um, definitely felt a little bit better than having it uh, with just the A2 birdcage on it. Now, for as loud as this guy was, for as little actual recoil reduction that it did, I actually don't really like this one. This one here is probably the one that I like the least so far, uh, but I do like that it doesn't blow a bunch of smoke back in my face. Alrighty, this is muzzle brake number four. This one here is the tanker style muzzle, muzzle brake. Uh, it's probably the heaviest one out of all of them, probably weighs around 12 ounces, which is a lot um, sitting at the end of your barrel. It's only about an inch and a half long, so in that respect, it's not too bad, um, but I just don't like how heavy it is. Now, with this guy here, because it's angled back towards me, got my safety glasses on, because I'm pretty sure that it's going to kick a lot of smoke back up in my face, which I'm not gonna like. Uh, so let's go ahead, and we got 20 rounds of tool in here, and uh, let's see how it runs. I love the muzzle flash, love the recoil reduction. Feels like nothing in my shoulder. Um, that muzzle flash is kind of insane. The smoke wasn't as bad as the other one. Gotta be honest, it kind of has a less, less aggressive angle to it, so it kind of pushes it out away from you as opposed to directly back at you. So I actually like this one a lot more than I thought it was. Not bad, not bad at all. And again, recoil reduction, great. It's on par with the other one that threw it right back up in my face. Uh, so I actually like this one quite a bit. Let's go ahead and uh, we got one more, I believe, which is the seven inch uh, muzzle brake guy. And we'll see if that guy actually does anything. So let's go ahead and get the guy on here. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have the last muzzle brake uh, for the day. This is number five. Uh, it really is just the inside of a silencer with all the baffles and stuff, but it's just marketed as a muzzle brake. And I got it for $55 on eBay. So this one here was by far the most expensive one. This one here was almost as expensive as the other four combined. Um, but let's see if it actually does any uh, recoil suppressing. So we got 20 rounds of Federal loaded up. We're gonna go ahead and fire all these guys. Um, now it is huge, it is seven inches long. So it turns an 18 inch barrel into essentially 25 inches long. It's actually not that heavy. It's only about four, four and a half ounces. So it's definitely not the heaviest one because it's 70, 75 aluminum. Uh, so it should be fun. Uh, now I would never put this on a weapon. It's just way too long. Uh, now if it was an actual suppressor and you had the can to go around it, uh, you, might, you might do that. But with this gun, it's just way too long and we'll see if it actually does any real suppressing. Once again, round stuck in there. And I'm not sure if that's just the weird back pressure things that something this long is doing to the gun or if that's the ammo. I don't think it's the ammo because that ammo's never had an issue cycling in this guy before. Not gonna lie, uh, the recoil feels very similar to the just the smaller circular one that didn't really do much of anything. Uh, it's really, really loud. Um, yeah, not great. 
really long, not very heavy though, but it uh, doesn't do anything. So, or at least it doesn't do very much. So that's uh, definitely not worth it as a muzzle brake. Alrighty, so now we're actually back to the original A2 birdcage that was on there when I started. The reason for that is I want to fire another 20 rounds uh, through this magazine, and I want to kind of get a feel for how that was again. And then I'm going to fire two more magazines uh, through my other two favorites, which were the tanker style and the the small, like kind of normal one that I got for like 12 bucks, one of the first ones that I tried, I believe. And then we're going to put those two back to back, see which one of those I like the best, and then put that guy on there. And then I have a fourth mag, which is a 25 rounder, and we're gonna go ahead and do a mag dub with it. So that being said, of course, let's go ahead, load this guy up, and uh, see how it goes. 20 rounds, Tula, 150 grain FMJ ammo. Uh, but definitely something I will definitely keep the AT birdcage just in case you know you're going back to the range or doing anything like that. You want to have it on there just so that you're not blowing smoke and blowing everybody else's eardrums out. Alrighty, so now we are back to the tanker style muzzle brake, which was actually one of the ones that I liked the most, even though I didn't think that I would. The muzzle flash on it is kind of hilarious, and the recoil reduction is actually really good. So we have 20 rounds of Tula, 150 grain in here. Let's go ahead and uh, see how it does. What's that? It's a bad jam. Well, not bad. Okay, I mean, it's cheap ammo. There we go. Last round. <laughs> so this guy here is the last muzzle brake. This one here is the short, very, very simple one. You can't really screw this one up at all. Um, got it for like 12 bucks on eBay. Uh, but I actually like it a lot. It, I don't think it's the best in terms of recoil reduction, uh, but it does kind of mitigate a little bit of the flash. It's definitely nowhere as crazy as a tanker style one, uh, but it still does do a good job of keeping that recoil away from your shoulder. There we go. But uh, I think that I don't actually quite like this one here as much as the tanker. It's not quite as aggressive uh, in terms of recoil compensation. Uh, now the tanker does have quite a bit more muzzle flash, which is kind of hilarious, and I like it a lot. So we're gonna go ahead, put the tanker back on here, really tighten it down and do a mag dump with the 25 round mag. Huh. Alrighty, so we're back to my favorite one, which is actually the tanker style muzzle brake, which has an insane amount of flash and a really, really good amount of recoil reduction. So I think I'm gonna leave this guy on there. It's probably one of the heaviest ones, if not the heaviest one, it's like, 12 ounces, I want to say. I forget exactly what it was, but it, the eBay listing might not have even been accurate. Um, but it's not that long, so it's not too horrible at the end of the barrel, and it really does make up for that extra weight in terms of recoil reduction. So we have 25 rounds, Tula, pretty cheap ammo. Let's see if we can get through a full mag dump with this guy and uh, have some fun. Hey you, yeah you, what are you still doing here? The video's over. Wait, 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 why are you still here? Like, share, and subscribe. Or don't, the choice is yours. But if you do subscribe, thanks, and I like pizza. Peace out.